Okay, yes. So um, we're going to do a uh, call the meeting to order. We're going to do a roll, roll call. Uh, Helene Lieb here. Mary McGoldrick here. Meg Wheeler here. Brian Collins here. John Chapman here. <coughs> and Lee needs to uh, be I'm unmuted. Here. I'm here. Uh, we're trying to unmute him. Yes, Lee, you're here. You say you're here. Lee? Yeah. Good. Can you hear us, Lee? I can hear you. Can you hear okay. me? So he's here, and Meg's here. And Mike. Just to confirm, we don't have Rob or Tom, correct? I don't see them, but right. they're hiding. Okay. Okay. And I just admitted John, and he's here. Okay, so the only ones who are not here are Tom and Rob, and they should be coming later. Um, so the first order of business on the agenda uh, Chris, you wanted us to talk about the financial plan, the, yeah, the updated financial policies. We have Paul on the call tonight. Uh, I, hope, I think everyone should have gotten them. We sent those out last week. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll have, I'll have uh, turn this over to Paula to, uh, to explain the update. Okay. Um, this, uh, started a while back, um, with, uh, just the investing and, um, uh, by law, um, the trust funds for the town can only be invested in very, very conservative, um, vehicles as well as 22 limited stocks they call that the legal list and it is quite limited actually there's like seven consumer staples six healthcare, three industrials two financials two utilities the only discretionary consumer discretionary is mcdonald's and the only information technology is hewlett packet there is nothing for energy materials telecom or real estate um, so that's what, like all the stabilization, general funds, all that kind of stuff is invested in, in, in that as well as um, the trust funds. So what we did, um, we started with the Board of Selectmen and actually I think we came before you as well as, as far as uh, introducing a special act that would allow us to move to the prudent investor, which would open up our equity options to be more diversified and actually probably in some cases reduce risk. So that's what we went ahead and did. Um, and the Board of Selectmen agreed with that. And we also went to town meeting and they agreed to that. And it did take a bit of an effort, but Don, Chris and I and a, and a bunch of folks went into the state house and testified at their uh, joint hearings. And uh, they um, eventually approved it. And so now what we have is a, we have the legal authority to go ahead and invest beyond this 22 legal, uh, equity legal list but our policy was originally written with the legal list. So the policy is kind of lagging behind what, what um, we are authorized to do right now. So the changes in that um, investment policy is basically to open up the investments for the trust funds. That's like cemetery scholarship, that kind of thing, to open up the investing in those um, funds to take advantage of the prudent investor rather than limiting it to this legal list of 22 equities. Thank you for the explanation, Paul. Uh, so Chris, um, do you want us to make some recommendation on it? Yeah, so the, uh, the, 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 the hope would be if it's good. If anyone has any questions, please ask. But uh, the, the, recommend, the, the request would be for you to vote to recommend it or to, to accept it. Then okay. we'll go back to the Board of Selectmen and then okay, the vote, uh, to accept it. So if you have a question, just raise your hand and then um, I'll acknowledge you. Any questions to, uh, for Paula on this, on the prudent and switching to, from uh, the, the conservative vehicles to now a more prudent investor investment strategy? Okay, does anybody mm -hmm. want uh, any- interrupt, interrupt for a second. Yes, Mike, Michael Dick isn't here tonight either, is he? Yes, he is. Yeah, I am here. I don't see you. Okay, I believe you. Okay, he's here. He's, uh, on the Brady Board style uh, screen, I'm <laughs> immediately to your right. Well, actually, I do have a question. Okay. And Paula, there is. yes, I'm sure we're, all, we're going to approve this. I'm just cur out of curiosity, what has been our return using the prudent, uh, I'm sorry, using the legal list? And what's your hope for the prudent investor 
what's your hope for for return? The hope would be that we would uh, more closely match our benchmarks. Um, you know, for for a while there was kind of going like up and down, um, kind of hovering around our benchmarks, even though we were limited with the legal list. And in the last couple of years, it really hasn't. So it's been lagging behind um, the uh, just our benchmarks in general. And if you think you stop and take a look at like uh, information technology for for one example, if IT starts taking off and does really well, and all we have invested in it is HP, which isn't necessarily going to go with that whole trend. So there's been yeah, times yeah. when I've had to come before the board and say, look, you know what, we really don't have a lot of good technology companies in our portfolio, so we really haven't been able to ride this wave. And in yeah. fairness, the reverse has happened. But overall, I've been doing it for five years now, and overall, we're, we're lagging over a five-year trend. So that's right. why we kind of made the move that we wanted to go ahead and do this. There has been some uh, movement at the state to try and allow uh, towns to do to, to adopt a prudent investor through a local option, but it really hasn't gotten any traction. So we went off and made the case for Cohasset alone rather than allowing every community to accept it. Yep. No, I, I, I understand. We, we covered that. I'm, I'm more looking at how our investments did under the old, um, you know, well, what is the benchmark? You know, what are we benchmarking against? Is it's there, a blended uh, and a couple of the different companies that we use uh, have different um, standards as mm -hmm. far as like maybe Dow Jones or S&P. Um, but okay. there's also a, a fixed income aspect of it as well. Then they use Barclays. Okay. All right. Thank you. You. Any more questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, oh yeah, Lee. A just question. a quick question. What is our benchmark? What What did we make? I thought Michael asked you what What was the percentage we made on our money? I, I don't have the percentages here. They're, they're listed in our investment report. They're actually um, on the website because we I report quarterly to the the um, the board of selectmen, and I, I don't have it in front of me now. But overall, in the five-year trend, we've been lagging behind. The uh, like the, the combination of the S and P and Barclays, S and P 500. I mean, we're making five or six percent, two percent, three percent, or what? Let me see. Hang on. Hang on. Hang Okay, the benchmark specifically for the permanent trust funds is a combination of the, um, let's see, S&P 500 and then the, the Barclays uh, U.S. government bonds and Citigroup, Citigroup's three-month treasuries. And for like the last calendar year, um, we, we made 16.33%, but the benchmark was 19.19. Okay, and... Thanks. Over five years, it was 6.93 for the fund, and it was 7.43 for the benchmark. Is that, is that what you're looking for? Thank you. That's all I'm just. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Do we have a motion to accept this uh, policy? The no, new no. policy? Yes. Uh, Mary is making uh, a motion. And is there a second? Second. Uh, Rob Hillman, uh, the second. And uh, all in favor of this motion, please uh, say aye. One at a time. Just say aye, aye in your name, because that's the only way to do it. We're starting with Lee. Lee? Uh, aye. OK, Mary? Aye, Mary McGoldrick. Meg? Aye, Mike Wheeler. Uh, Fran? Hi, Frank Collins. John? I can't hear you, John. No, you I'm mute. Uh, okay. All right. Mute. Yes, I could hear you. So what did you say, John? I said I. Okay. And Robert? Rob? Rob Hillman, I. 
Okay, so, uh, and Mike, what happened to Mike Dick? Uh, Chris, I can't hear you. I think he dropped off a couple of minutes ago. I saw yeah. him pop out. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I, I muted myself. You know, um, yeah, Mike, Mike's coming back. Okay, so we have a majority, okay? By far. But by the way, um, if you're muted and you want to temporarily unmute and you're on a computer screen uh, with a keyboard, just press the space bar. As long as you're pressing the space bar, you can talk and just release it and it'll put you back on mute. It's like a temporary release. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It's a, it's a toy to know. Yes. Yeah, it's great. Okay. So that's uh, what I just did. Yes, great. So you just temporarily, you just play, uh, press the space bar. Awesome. Uh, so the next next part of the agenda, Chris, that you wanted us to discuss? Um, I think Mike is working his way back in here. I just, uh, he's not quite back yet. Um, so then the next part of the agenda tonight is to pivot to the budget. Yes. Just about the budget. Um, and uh, we wanted to, to work, walk you through what we walked the selectmen through the other night, which was um, first the, um, um, uh, first the, um, the third quarter, and then taking a look at where we are expecting the fourth quarter to be, and then uh, talk about the changes we want to make uh, for the FY21 budget and the philosophy behind it. Uh, so, due to the COVID-19. Uh, yeah, so um, um, I, I would ask, uh, so with Don, Paul and I have been meeting uh, twice weekly for weeks now, and um, uh, Don has done a tremendous job of, of searching, I think, every back pocket of the town that we can find. Um, and taking a look at where we can make cuts without harming essential services or services, period. And the cuts are necessary because of the state going down 10%, you said, the state uh, funding. Yeah, the, state is, the state is projecting a loss of $4.4 .4 billion between this year and next uh, oh. potential revenue. Though, again, it, the, the real reality is we don't know, right? We don't know what's going to happen. So the philosophy we're trying to maintain here is we're, we're AAA credit. We have strong, we have strong resources that we can, we can, uh, we can, manage through this. It's also not a two or three month thing. This could be a couple of years in terms of recovery. So we don't want to make hasty, rash actions. Uh, we want to buy ourselves some time, see what's going on, keep things stable. Uh, and we can. And then if we need to make adjustments, uh, more adjustments come December, we'll do that. We'll make more adjustments come December. Um, but at this point, um, we have a, a projection. Um, so but before we jump into that, let me go back to the third quarter. You all got the third quarter materials. And, I, 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 and by the way, the third quarter, so that's a general philosophy we're looking at. Smooth landing, keep services, you know, tighten the belt, but not go draconian at this point because we don't have to. Um, and at the same time, um, we did end the third quarter really well. And if this was, if things were normal, we'd be heading for a pretty good year. Um, that said, the strong third quarter we've had um, is putting us in a good place for the fourth quarter. And Paul has done a tremendous amount of work on cash flow, making sure that we're okay. And, um, and we are. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit too. So uh, I'll flip to Don to talk about the third quarter and then I guess all of us can talk a little bit about the fourth. Okay. Thanks, Don. Yeah, so uh, I will start with the general fund and then kind of work through water and sewer. A couple quick points on each. Um, through three quarters, we'd expect to see about 75% of our budget either received at least or expended to date. So on the revenue side, we're at 78.6, a little bit better than our expected 75. Uh, compared to last year at this time, we're at 78.9. So pretty much right on point of where we were uh, this time last year. Um, we have strong collections of property tax, about 77.5%, and also strong excise tax collections in total about 96.1%. Uh, if you're looking through some of the reports, you'll notice that there are some that are lagging behind uh, other departmental revenue. That's one small area that's lagging behind, partly due to the timing of payments. A lot of that is harbor related and the timing of when those uh, mooring fees and other things are due. Uh, and another one is the sewer betterments that are funded by the general fund. Those also lag a little bit behind because um, A, the, the end up getting committed in January in their split. So half of the payment is due in January. The other half well, is committed in January. The other half is committed in April. And um, so we'll see a little bit lag behind there. But overall, the general fund is 78.6 of revenue received. Is, we're in good shape. Uh, the expense side, same. 
uh, we're at 70.5. So we're about 5% cushion uh, from where we would expect to be, which is good. Uh, same thing compared to last year, we're at 70.1. So again, revenues and expenses in the general fund are right on target. In the financial trends report, one thing I just would like to note is the snow and ice. Because of the warm winter, we're actually in a really good place with the snow and ice budget. Um, we actually right now have a budgetary surplus, which I don't think has happened in a number of years. Uh, right now we're at about $97,000 to date. Last year, that same time, we're at 190. So going into the fourth quarter, having that as a, a, a surplus, usually we end up requesting year-end transfers to cover that. So from that standpoint, we're in great shape uh, in snow and ice, which helps out all our other departments in year-end. Uh, I think I'll, I'll just go through each fund, and then if we have questions after, we'll do it that way. That's okay? Yeah, sure. Continue. Okay. So moving on to water, again, um, in great shape, 82.6% of revenues collected to date. Usage is uh, above expectations at 83%. System development, uh, we budget conservatively for this, but still we've doubled our budget. So 60,000 of 30 that we budgeted, which is great. Uh, on the expense side, uh, I've explained this, uh, you know, each quarter, you'll, you'll tend to see that in the water and sewer funds, year-to-date expenses end up being ahead of schedule due to the timing of when debt service payments are, are made, and that's on a set schedule. So uh, between that and we do some indirect transfers that are, are posted early in the year, but general expenses on that side are 63.2%, which is great considering that you know, through this point, we'd expect to be at about 75. Um, sewer, uh, not quite as good. Uh, we're at about 71%. Um, and partly to do, th that's really due to uh, the sewer betterments that are in the sewer fund. Again, like the general fund, there's a bit of a lag with the, the due date of payments. So 71% uh, considering that, we're actually online, or, online to meet our expectations. Um, Excuse me, Don, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, everyone, I've not been in this meeting for the last 15 minutes. I haven't heard anything since um, the last thing I heard was Paula trying to give us the um, return on investment. Didn't hear that and then everything and crashed. crashed. Um, I'm dialing in now, so I don't know what has transpired or what we're working on, um, but I feel like I need to get caught up pretty quick. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, we were about two thirds of the way through. I mean, I guess I could start over if, if that's what everybody wants me to do. Well, I'm in a tough position. I mean, I certainly want to fulfill my role here on the advisory committee. Yeah, All but right. um, the so, technology isn't working for me. I, I imagine it's working for everyone else, but yeah, I'm unable to follow what has happened or hear anything. Uh, Don, so, uh, now that I've gotten dialed in, yes. I can. Thank you, Meg, for helping out. Uh, Don, I have a question. Didn't you send this out um, on a PDF? Didn't we get this? That's correct. So you have you have reports of a summary level. Right, Mike. You and have then, a report. Do you have? Have? Were those just emailed out? Did we just receive them? Uh, they, they were emailed at a couple, at least a couple days ago, I think. Yeah, I read it a couple days ago. But I can, I can. Let me. It takes me a couple minutes. Let me just go through it again, if you guys don't mind. Keep Mike up to speed. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. Um, right. Somebody else is also trying to get in. Yes. This is John. I I don't see it in my email either. I have this for sort of the future one pager. Yeah, I don't see it either. I'm looking I for it. I haven't email. seen this current year stuff. Oh, I thought we got it. Maybe I was just thinking of something. I, don't, I didn't get it either. Okay, so Don, why don't you go through it? Because I don't think um, people got it. Maybe I just remembered this from something else. So I don't think I, if yeah. you know, I got it, then I probably didn't do that. And, and also, Helene, if, um, if, if I'm not present for a vote, could you just take that as, or anybody, not just me, but anybody, 
that we know, um, you know, affirmed their presence at the very beginning. Could, could we circle back and just make sure that everybody is um, on the call before we proceed? Uh, we'll try to do that. Okay, Mike? Yeah, yeah, because this technology is not ideal. Not 100%, I should say. Totally. Um, Don, we have to make sure we all get that then, okay? I don't know how I saw it somewhere along the line. But Sorry, I, uh, yeah. I forwarded it. I thought it all got into your inboxes. So, Chris, can you make sure we get that somewhere along the line? Yeah, I'm checking right now. I, I, I'm, I'm, so if, if you don't have it, I'll, I'll have it resent. Hold because on. if it was sent to me, I would have sent it to everybody. So I guess I didn't get it either. The numbers just sounded familiar, but I probably just had it from last time, from the second quarter. I was remembering it. Okay, and just, just to get myself aligned with everyone else, on the agenda, I see annual town meeting. Are we on the budget? Is that what we're doing right now? Yes. The third okay. quarter. Okay. And I guess what I remembered was the second quarter. So I don't, I, if we got the third quarter, I would have sent it to everybody. So, um, Don, you want to continue? Yeah. Yeah. So I was just making sure who I sent it to. All right. Doesn't matter. You guys will have it shortly to peruse, and then after I go over this, we can answer any questions. Yes, when you send it, Don, do you send it through Outlook? You just post it on Outlook? Um, I sent it to, to Chris. Oh, okay. Okay. Going so, forward, I'll just send it to everybody, though. Okay, that's a good idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, we'll start back at the general fund. So, again, three quarters through, we'd expect to be about 75%. Uh, um, Mike's not here. I'm on the phone. Oh, okay. No and, problem. And I'm connected Mary, by audio only. Mary had a question, I think, before yes. Don gets started. Yes. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, Don, is there something, or Chris, that you could screen share as you're talking through this? That might be helpful. Um, yes. Uh, I, can, I can show the... Um, the, the the main local receipt, uh, maybe this? Yeah, do that. Unfortunately, I don't know how to share the screen right now. No, I can. Um, hold on. Uh, yeah, because that was helpful last time. Remember, Mary, we did that? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we did last week. Or last time we were together. Is that is that helpful? That's great. Ah. That's oh, we'll see. 78.6% received to date. Uh, better than expected. I know. Uh, pretty close to the same as last year, March 31st. 78.9%. So we're right in line with where we were last year. Property tax and excise tax are well. Um, well, property tax is right in line. Excise tax is well above our expectations as usual. Uh, I mentioned there's a, a small lag in departmental revenues and our sewer betterments that are funded in the general fund. And other departmental is due to the timing of when payments are due. These mostly relate to harbor related fees and sewer betterments. The amount added to your tax bill is ended up split between uh, the fiscal third and fourth quarters. So you're going to see a little lag there. But overall, 78.6%, we're in, in line, looking good. General fund expenses, 70.5%. Under budget, about 5%. And um, the same time last year, we're at 70.1%. So revenues and expenditures, comparable to last year, uh, we're in good shape. I had mentioned in the financial trends report, I don't think you have to pull this up, it's just a quick note. Uh, snow and ice due to the warm winter. Uh, we actually have a surplus at this point, which I don't think has happened in at least the last three years since I've been here. And I doubt even before then. So that is good, especially going into year end where we tend to need year end transfers to cover that deficit. Uh, the same time last year, we were at 190,000. So uh, there's about $100,000 savings, which will definitely help with uh, closing out the year. 
Right. Moving on to water, well above expectation, 82.6%. We've had a great collection of usage fees or usage charges. System development, we've doubled what our budget was. We've collected 60,000, we budgeted 30. Again, that's a, we budget conservatively there because you don't really know what necessarily who's gonna be coming online each year based on construction. Um, so that ends up being a conservative budget number, but uh, we're 200%, which is great. And then year-to-date expenses, 81.5% overall, but, but really just due to timing, you'll see debt service is up there and indirect costs and other transfers. And those are just based, again, based on timing. General expenses though, on the other hand, are 63.2%, well under the 75% we'd expect at this time. Uh, so water is in, in really good shape going into the fourth quarter. Thank you. Still, slightly under expectation, about 71.2%. Um, most of the revenues are in line, but sewer better, the little harbor betterments that are within the sewer fund, again, just like the general fund, when they're built, they're, the payment due dates are lagged between two quarters. So you'll see a lag there, which kind of makes up why we're at 71.2% instead of 75 or better at this point. Um, expenses, same thing with water. Overall, they're at about 80.8% due to timing, debt service, and transfers. General expenses, 66.6. Uh, one thing to note with sewer, as everybody knows, we, we're working to replace the membranes um, in the sewer treatment plant. And we've had to divert flow to hull during the initial time and then also during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because of the timing of their delivery. Delivery was delayed a bit, which required us to have to divert a little more flow. So there's gonna be some added expense on our end, paying hull, they charge a higher rate. And since it's a pass through, um, we're gonna see some higher expenses on our end. But um, in the annual town meeting warrant, you'll see a supplemental appropriation for the sewer fund so that we can, we can try to combat that before year rent to, to have a little funding source. Uh, to cover those extra expenses from their sewer retained earnings. And that is a pretty much a quick snapshot of where we are through the third quarter. Uh, I think we're in good shape at this point. Uh, again, we don't know what the future is going to hold for us over the next few months. Uh, so far, um, well, before we get into the fourth quarter, do we have questions on what I've presented so far? Any questions? Yes. Okay, Mike. Okay. Yeah, if you could put um, the last two screens up, just if you could explain the favorable slash unfavorable notations and um, could you explain? I can't hear you very well, Mike. It's coming very muffled. Hang on. Is this better? Yes. Much better. Great. Okay, good. Um, if you could explain the designation of favorable slash unfavorable on um, those budgets so I can understand what they actually mean to us and how it all ties into the third quarter report. So favorable versus unfavorable through three quarters, you'd expect to see 75% for the most part of revenues or expenses. Again, some are a little off because of timing, but uh, so if we have in the general fund, 78.6% of revenues collected to date, we have a favor, we're, we're in a favorable position at this point of the year. So same thing on, on the expense side, conversely, it's if you're under the 75%, we're looking at a good, we're looking in good shape budget to actual. I don't know if that answers your question, Mike. So in order to understand what, what we see, and I, I am able to see the screen share now. Um, when I see unfavorable, it throws me off. So are you saying, well, it says unfavorable, but you can ignore that because we have lagging tallies coming in or for whatever reason? Yeah, I mean, 
I see what you're saying. It, it's a little, yeah. It, it, I guess, the, the, the unfair, I mean, that's the whole year's budget. That's the variance, really. That's yeah, that's the, the variance. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sure. So that's just, that. all that is doing is comparing the budget to the year-to-date expense. Um, really, that, that column at the end of the year is really what tells you if you had a favorable, unfavorable budget overall. Looking over to the next column, the received or expended to date, that's what I'm focusing on, on percentage-wise. So you'll see property tax, 77%, 0.5% received to date. 96.1 for excise tax, so on and so forth. And that and that's where I'm going with the percentages and favorable or not through three quarters. Okay. Um, it, it's very confusing, but I don't want to hold up this meeting. But if you're sending us a report and you're putting into it a column that's favorable or unfavorable, my reaction is, whoa, that's, that's a lot of unfavorable. So it would be helpful to have an explanation as, as part of this report to say we are actually on track for our cash flow, that our, our estimate to complete the year is on track. That's what I would be most interested in knowing. Um, aside from favorable, unfavorable, is our estimate to complete the year on track? And, and yeah, so I apologize. The information that I tend to send out, which I will send out myself going forward, just to make sure everybody gets it. I give a little synopsis in writing of where we're at, favorable, un unfavorable, for the quarter ended, which is what I just kind of explained. I get what you're saying about the, that, that column being confusing. It's been the same report okay. Okay. for a long time. I can, I can change it. I have no problem doing that or just putting a footnote to explain better, but. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's really the information I would want to know is, are we on track to complete the year on budget? And if it's not on track, then an explanation for why. That's really what I think I'm interested in uh, as a member of this committee. And that's in the email, uh, uh, Mike, that's uh, now been forwarded off to everybody. Um, which, by the way, I thought it was Great. in my office because it was sent to uh, other folks here, but that's okay. So, but it's in that. So, uh, the email that you should have in your inbox now should have it has Don's summary in there. Um, Thank so, you. Uh, without belaboring the third quarter, I, I do think uh, to follow up on Mike's point, cash flow is really important because obviously the world has changed. So, it, whatever we were as of as of the end of the third quarter doesn't really matter <laughs> uh, outside of context now because the fourth quarter has changed the world. Uh, so I do want to pivot to that if that's okay. Uh, so through three quarters, we were in okay shape. In fact, we were in pretty strong shape in some cases. Um, what's happened though, is the world has changed. And we all stopped and said, hey, are we gonna be okay? Are we gonna be able to meet our bills? What happens if people stop paying their taxes? So all I have run a bunch of spreadsheets and we've been talking about this now for weeks. Uh, the, I feel pretty comfortable, I think we all feel pretty comfortable saying that we should end the year okay. Um, and that one of the is that we tend to lag. We're a lag, lagging reality here. You know, we, we're, we're pretty the course of the year through. And again, I forget, Paul can update us, but as of the last, we were at 85%, I think, of our tax collections for property taxes, something like that. And Paul could give us a better number on that um, because we're getting payments. Now, we normally at 99 or actually really at 100 plus because we usually get a lag from past years. So we don't, we don't know that we're going to get quite to there, but Paul ran some... Um, some initial analyses showing just what happened if we only got 75%. Well, we've blown through that um, and we're gonna be comfortably in the 90s. I think we're pretty comfortable. Um, our meals tax, uh, that lags a little bit. So while we don't expect much to come in in the summer, <laughs> which is a, a late spring number, um, we're gonna be okay. Same thing with motor vehicle. I mean, these are for cars that already are bought, right? I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not new car sales. We're gonna see a decrease in some local revenues, but we feel okay uh, that based on where we are today, and again, I'm, I'll turn this over to Donna Paul for some more specifics. Uh, based on where we are today, we should be, we should end the year okay. States kind of, the state is uh, committed to uh, meeting its obligations on state aid through the end of the year. 
So I think we'll end the year okay. Um, the real concern is what's going to happen next year and the year after, because new growth, new properties, that's what's going to lag. People going to, you know, are people going to stop building and buying new homes? Are people going to not buy the new car? The answer is probably yes. Um, so we looked back, and again, we'll talk about that in a second. We took a look back at what happened uh, 12 years ago during the Great Recession and what kind of impacts happened here. I know what happened in my prior community, too. And we looked at what happened here, and we're using that as a little bit of a benchmark. Um, so if we want to turn to the fourth quarter, if, if uh, you, uh, Don, and Paula just want to talk about where we think we're going to be as we head towards year end, because, again, that's a good point, Mike, and I want to, uh, uh, you know, zoom in on that. So can I, can I, yeah, there you go, Paul. Do you want, do you want to give us a little yeah. cash flow look? Sure. Well, what I, what I focused on first was um, the, uh, the taxes coming in because that's, that's the biggest source and uh, the biggest um, kind of variable from, from my perspective, what I thought. And as of today, um, and this is the day before the taxes are actually due, we've collected 89.8% .8 of the taxes that we would for the year. So there's about $10 million that we collect per quarter. And uh, we've already got a good chunk of that. We only have about $4 million left. And a lot of people wait until the last minute and there will be some people that, that do it later. Um, so I think from that perspective, we were doing, we're doing pretty good. Like Chris said, by the end of, the, the, by the end of June, we usually have 99% of all the taxes collected just for, um, the fiscal 20 taxes. I'm not including any prior years we may have collected as well. I'm just looking at um, 20 to see what's going on the here and the now. Um, and for a motor vehicle standpoint, we're at 85% and which is pretty good. Um, it's a little bit behind, but we also put out um, about $200,000 worth of bills only about a week ago. So I expect that number to go up to over the next two weeks. Um, so what I did with that then is I, um, I, I've been following this and I've been also do, kind of like doing like a rolling average for like one, two, three weeks to see, see if I can see that, that we're falling off. Um, one of the important things we got was our, our escrow companies. Um, we've got multiple checks and, and wires from them. The biggest one coming from CoreLogic, which is about $3 million. And thankfully that was not put off until June. And um, so that was, that was very good news. So we're actually ahead of where we were last year, but that has a lot, that one payment has an awful lot to do with it because it's $3 million. Um, so after looking at the receivables then, we, I did some work with the, uh, the cash flow just to see, um, to make sure we could to pay our bills if we, if we weren't getting the money in. So like Chris said, that we, I did a lot of, like estimates, reducing, um, reducing uh, estimated receipts just for the, the next, on a monthly basis, not the whole year, because you can kind of target it. I mean, obviously the, it, the impact is gonna be squished into the last you know, three or four months of the year. So with that, um, so with reducing the, um, the revenues, didn't really reduce expenses at all, kind of use that as, as kind of a cushion. And even with that, I, I don't see us running out of general fund money for several months. And as we go through and um, use more and more actuals, hopefully that, that'll get pushed out further and further. So, so we're in a, from a cash flow perspective, we're in a good place for several months. And then we'll also see what happens, you know, with, with this June payment, just how many people don't end up paying their taxes. Um, Cause like I said, a lot of people just wait till the last minute. There's generally a line in my office um, off and on all day long on May 1st. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, checks coming in the mail, people dropping them off at the drop box um, because they don't want to pay any sooner than they have to. And now it's all pushed off to June. So I'm sure a lot of people are waiting until June 1st to make a payment. Um, so over the next you know, month or so, we'll get a, a better handle on just how much of an impact it has on folks here in Cohasset um, and how many of them are gonna be struggling. Because every year there's people who struggle with their taxes, obviously, but we'll see how much bigger that, that is this year. And I will maintain this, taking the, the monthly numbers to see, to make sure that 
we're set for several months into the future. And then if not, we can make any adjustments, but we'll know ahead of time. Thank you, Paul. Any questions? I have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, sure, Meg, go and then Fran. Uh, just for clarification, the $3 million that you said we just received, what was that for exactly? It's uh, from CoreLogic. They're, they, uh, they kind of a processor for all the banks that are holding mortgages. Gotcha. Okay. They check to make sure that um, how much is owed and what the due dates are. They let the banks know. They collect the money and send it off to us. Perfect. And then I, I have for the notes that you said 89.8% of the taxes for the year have been collected. But I think that was all of the taxes, correct? Not property? Not just That's property. right. Property and real estate taxes, but it's only the fiscal 20 taxes. It's not like people who paid from caught up with last year's taxes or anything. So that's why the numbers will be different from what John is talking about. Okay. And I, I've been comparing those year over year yep. too, and then kind of doing a trend like over the last week, two weeks, three weeks. Yep. So we are off, but it, and it's kind of hard to tell now because we got that big check right. this year, uh, yep. last week, but last year we actually didn't get it until um, the very end, right, right before um, May 1st. It was, I think it was like the 30th or the 29th or something. So are we off? When you say we're off from last year, then are we off yes. factoring in that big check last year as if it had been received or? No, if you take that out because it, it came in later last year. Okay. And that's obviously a big chunk of money that's going to throw it off. So right now, if you look at the doll, we're, we've collected more in tax and absolute dollars and we've collected more relatively. But okay. in another day or two, it's going to flip the okay. other way because the $3 million will be in last year's number. So when okay. you when you take that out, we, we are behind, gotcha. but we've also pushed out the date to June 1st. So a lot of people, whether they can afford to or yep. not, are probably waiting. Waiting, yep. So, but, so, but we're still pretty good. We're, we're just under 90% already. And I mean, some communities have struggled getting that by the end of June. So, so I think we're doing okay. And I'm sure over the next month, we'll get a lot more, so. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, Fran, you had a question? Fran? Fran, you gotta unmute. Now, June 1st, but uh, uh, I just wanted to be sure that was a fact. Why did we move it up a month? Uh, I don't understand that. Uh, That's the, an option the, the that state... was provided. Please answer Chris. that question. Okay, Chris. Chris, do you want to answer that? Sure. Um, so um, the state passed a series of emergency, legis uh, 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 emergency legislation, um, which allowed municipalities to push the property tax deadline back a month, uh, and um, and many communities have been, and the board of selectmen uh, adopted that and gave everybody an extra month to pay uh, because of all the uncertainty and everything else. So um, the board adopted that a couple of weeks ago. Um, but the town wouldn't be upset if we paid it on time, however, on May 1st. Well, we're hoping that, you know, we, we, that. we <laughs> most certainly would encourage everyone to pay, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, thank Any you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, we can go, go on, Chris. Okay, Chris, Chris, you want to add on that? Tom? You're good. Yes, I got you. I got you, Helene. Uh, and is there anything else you want to add, Donnie? You're good. You feel, I can't see you anymore. Oh, there you go. Uh, Don, do right, so, Don, do you want to add anything else? Uh, no, I think. I think. Uh, I mean, other than we have a number of um, number of line items of the budget on the expense side that we actually are, are seeing some good, uh, we're projecting some good surpluses. So along with uh, the revenue con collections that Paula mentioned and some of these surpluses that we're, we're uh, banking on for year end, I, I think uh, we're looking in good shape for the end of the fiscal 20 year. Okay. That's it. So for example, um, uh, Fran, Fran has a question. Fran? Uh, Chris, that one, that one sheet uh, budget uh, adjustments and proposed offsets. Are we going to talk about that tonight, or is that? Uh, was yeah, that that's, that's, that's 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 coming right now. Yeah. 
That's the okay. next topic. All right. Thank you. Okay, Chris, you want to um, start with the next so, topic. Okay, so um, so as part of looking through, you know, the fourth quarter and figure out what kind of what's going to lag, we need to look at next year. Um, obviously, things have changed. Uh, one of the challenges is that there's still not a lot of information. So, um, I mean, Don could talk about the call he was on with uh, with state officials, financial officials all over the state uh, a week or so ago. There's another one coming up in a couple of days. I think it's next week um, uh, for small towns. I think it's going to be the exact same call that they had for everybody else. But um, the um, the reality is that we're in a great uncertainty. However, we're absolutely certain that revenues are going to go down. And I'm not talking about property taxes per se, but I'm talking about um, local receipts and state aid. So um, we, we've, we've talked about this now for a couple of weeks. And, and uh, after a lot of back and forth, um, we've drilled down to what's, uh, what's on that one sheet that you now have. Uh, and again, I, what I'll do is I'll put this up in just a second. I'll post it on the screen as well. And uh, so, um, we're looking at about six hundred thousand uh, dollars, and that and that's split between a decrease in local receipts. Local receipts is building permits. It's um, it, it's primarily excise motor vehicle excise tax. Um, it's meals tax. It's things like that, uh, and then state aid. We're predicting a, a decrease in state aid, uh, based again looking at uh, what happened in the past when when, when you know the economy went south, um, and, and also just you know looking at, at some of the trends that, that were in the budget. And, and anyway, you know, th things like building permit fees, we know what kind of trap people aren't gonna build for a little while. Um, so, uh, I, and at the same time, the goal here was, okay, we, we have this hit. We don't wanna start, you know, slashing and burning. Because we don't know what's gonna happen. You know, we need as stability as possible. Uh, the, the town has done a great job of coming together uh, community-wise, residents alike, and we've kept things stable, providing good service. The schools have done a tremendous job. Uh, our first responders have done a great job. Don and his team have done a great job. Um, it, you know, we're paying the bills. <laughs> you know, it's seamless. People are getting their paychecks. We're paying vendors. Um, and it's, it's all been done on the fly. Ron and his team have been absolutely instrumental in, in making this analog to digital leap. So we want to keep stability. And, um, and we have the ability to, again, as a AAA credit, we should be able to, right? We, we have a strong conservative budget. Uh, we have money put aside in a variety of places, and um, and we, we want to do things logically and with as much information as possible. Um, so where we are is um, in a place where we have to accommodate the fact that we're projecting a little less than $600,000 of revenue cuts. So what do we do? So I'm going to put this up on the screen, and I'm going to flip it over to Don to, to talk more about this, because I have to give him tremendous kudos for the amount of work he's done down into this. Question first. <clears throat> uh, John, I think question. John John has a question. Yes, John. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I have to keep my finger in that space bar. Um, okay. You have this. You mentioned local receipts and you gave examples. Does that not include property tax? And if not, are you that implies you're assuming that that will be sort of meet projections? Yeah, um, the uh, you know the property tax is what it is, right? Uh, we always collect the property tax, <laughs> whether even if it's not in the in the year given, we're we're going to get it uh, because we're first in line every single time. And even in bad years, you know, th this is one of those those times when having a residential tax base, which ninety three percent of our or ninety two percent of our taxes are are, are, are residential, is a good thing. Um, you know, people have invested a lot uh, in in the, in this community and in their homes. And I, you know, people are going to do everything possible to make sure their homes are preserved and maintained. So, um, you know, one of the things that that you know we may not get ninety nine percent collected in, in, in the year. Maybe it'll be less, but it, it's highly. We, we're just not projecting that it's going to fall all that much, um, simply because um, again, it's a stable community. Uh, it's a pretty you know financially secure community, and, and folks who are having trouble anyway. There, there, there's ways. We have some people on tax title and stuff now, or, or various programs, and there's other programs that'll be out. But we don't see this uh, as, as more uh, kind of on the side. I know, again, it could change, uh, but we're not projecting a very large. We're not projecting any cut in property tax collections. It may get a little flat, uh, and maybe it may drag a little bit, but we're not, we're not expecting people not to pay their taxes. Thank you. 
So if that's, uh, if there's no one else, I'll, I'm going to put this chart up and then I'm going to pivot over to Don and let him talk. All right. So as, as Chris mentioned, we took a look at uh, the two biggest variable revenue sources that we have, local receipts and state aid. Uh, local receipts, uh, we did just under 10 or just over a 10% decrease. And really we looked at motor vehicle and other excise tax receipts back when the 08 recession happened. And in the succeeding two years, 09 and 10, we saw 10% in each year as a decrease in motor vehicle and other excise. Motor vehicle and other excise account for 40% of our total local receipts. So based on that assumption, we ended up reducing all local receipts by 10.3%. Um, and then really state aid is, is a guesstimate. We really don't know. We know that the rest of 20 is gonna be okay. We'll get our, our state aid that has been committed to us. Um, but like Chris said, I was on a call last week with uh, MAPC, city managers, uh, mayors, finance staff from towns across and cities across the state. And every question about state aid, there were no answers. More questions than answers. They don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's too early to know. Um, so, you know, 5%, could it be more? Maybe. Could it be less? Maybe. Again, it's, without killing the budget, I think a 5% estimate is reasonable. Uh, I've consulted with a number of other, other colleagues and in other towns in this area. And between five and ten percent is, is is what I've been seeing, mostly in the in the five or a little bit below. So I think five percent is reasonable. And so in total that's about six hundred thousand dollar revenue decreases that we're gonna see. Um, before we move on to any of the next sections, are there any questions at this point? So uh, after we determined the revenue decrease from the original budget, we had to come up with some proposed offsets to you know, try to make the impact of the town and school budget as minimal as possible to continue providing the services that we are used to receiving in Cohasset. So the first one you see, transfer from pension reserve fund. Pension reserve fund has been a, a reserve fund we've had on the books so I've been doing some research dating back to early 90s, if not before. Um, and I believe 2006, they actually, I think because of Mass General Laws having a pension reserve stabilization fund, they, had, they took the balance of this old fund and called a pension reserve fund. Basically what they did year after year was uh, basically supplement the budget to offset the cost of, of pension. Now, we, we haven't used it in years. It's about 370,000 in this, in this account. And so I proposed of transferring 200,000 from this fund to help offset the cost of our, our FY21 pension assessment, essentially. Um, the next item that we looked at was our OPEB transfer that is normally done at the annual town meeting. And so what we deter decided to do, we, we have some surplus free cash that was not appropriated or, or put into other stabilization funds at special town meeting. So we're proposing 165,000 be funded from the free cash opposed to within, within our budgeted revenues here. And so that brings in net down to about 230,000. And so after looking at the revenue sources, I looked at some of our expenditures and these are, when, you, when, you're, when you're looking at our budget, our five-year forecast, these are above the line expenditures. So um, the first one, remove the capital stabilization FY21 increase. For years, we've had kind of a cap or, or uh, a floor, about 2.7 million based on the initial transfer plus or minus any, any debt roll off. So, uh, one of the things that you folks over the last year or so have recommended is to try to build in an increase, which I initially did of 2% uh, in the budget, but 
you know, that was kind of the low hanging fruit to, to kind of help minimize um, the town and school impact. So there's 55,000 there. We have a bit of a uh, overtime surplus built in to the facilities above the line salaries. So we were able to take about 15,000 from there. And then for, for this year, we removed the initial $50,000 stabilization fund transfer. Um, really, instead of putting money into the stabilization to take more money out, to take money out of it, we just determined to remove that transfer for uh, annual town meeting. And that resulted in about 120 of expenditure decreases with a total net revenue decrease of 100, about $110,000 that would have to be split between the town and the school based on our, our methodology of 39 to the town and 61 to the school. So the town side would have to reduce their budgets from 43,000 in the school 67. Uh, at this point, I've gone through our departmental budgets and have been able to come up with that number to be able to reduce our side without affecting salaries and, and our services, uh, mostly it's one-off consulting things that are built into our budgets. Uh, that, that's really what I, I focused on and, and was able to uh, balance. Uh, I spoke to Michael at the schools about the 67. Uh, he feels pretty comfortable that they'd be able to make that work. So I think based on the plan we have laid out here, um, you know, the state will have to make some cuts, but uh, I think the, the plan with the minimal impact to the town and school budgets at this point. And really, um, we'll see how the first couple quarters go. And if we have to come back and, and make adjustments during our fall town meeting, from my, I believe Chris is in, we're planning a December town meeting, early town meeting. Is that right? So that gives us, you know, three or four full months to to see where we're at in fiscal 21 and make any necessary adjustments at that point. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. So um, just a supplement on Don there. So my, uh, uh, the, the goal here is to get to, to keep us stable and to buy us some time to see what's really going to happen. Um, with the understanding we have, we're not touching the main stabilization fund. We have somewhere north of $4 million the main stabilization funds. So, you know, things get really bad. Um, you know, it's definitely raining. Okay, it's, it, all these funds are for a rainy day. It's raining. <laughs> so um, before we uh, pull out the arc and, and start preparing for 40 days and 40 nights at sea, um, we're, we're, we want to do some, um, you know, we want to take some moderate steps and, uh, and hope that things turn a positive. Um, if they don't, and, and again, remember, remembering that this is not a six month or three month problem. It's likely we're going to see impacts for this for the next year or two, um, if there's any kind of long-term impact. Because again, new, we'll be okay with new growth this year. We'll be okay with our meals tax. We'll be okay with our state aid. It's really what's going to happen next year. So we, we, there, there may be another set of cuts for 22 on top of this uh, that we may have to make. And we're also in the third, one of the other things that, that's important to know is we're in the third year of a, of a three-year contract. And um, it's, it's, it's really kind of important that we keep um, our, our staff has done great work and we really want to maintain what we have. Um, if we have to make adjustments, we want to give people as long notice as possible if it comes to that and try to find creative solutions so we don't have to start laying people off. And again, I'm, I'm saying that only because, you know, we're all thinking, you know, what else can we do if we had to? Um, we don't have to do that now and I'd really rather not. That's a last resort, absolute last resort. Layoffs don't save money. You got to pay overtime. You got to pay unemployment. You got to pay medical. It doesn't, it doesn't really save money in the short term. Um, and it just, it just it guts our ability to do work. Uh, we're, we're pretty tightly staffed as it is. Um, you know, we're, uh, our, our, we're uh, a couple of Corona COVID-19 cases away from having troubles at the fire and police station or public works or any other place. So we've been really lucky. Um, and, and the same thing with the schools. Uh, they're gonna have to make some adjustments and adapt, uh, but we don't wanna start making draconian cuts there either as we go into a, you know, this great unknown about what's, what's education gonna look like. Um, so, um, that's kind of the philosophy. So uh, again, I'm sorry, I, I know Mary had her hand up and others. Still does. 
I think Mary has her hand up, uh, Helene. Uh, yeah, I'm just having trouble. Wait a second to get the whole view here. Um, full screen. Yeah. Uh, Mary, you want to talk? Yeah, I just, I had a couple questions for Dawn. In terms of the pension fund, is that money that has to be returned to the fund? And if so, when? No, that that's uh, just another stabilization fund the town has had on its books for, like I said, years. Uh, in some of the research, I'm, I'm trying to do a little historical look back, look into old uh, annual reports to see the history of this fund. Mm -hmm. But for years, the town was using about 60000 a year from this fund to offset uh, a portion of the pension costs in the, as a funding source in the budget. Okay. Um, and how much money is remaining in there? So right now, before we even tap it, is about three hundred seventy thousand. Okay. So if we took the two, there's still about there's about one hundred seventy, give or take, remaining in that fund for future years. Okay. Um, and then my other question is is Chris, I'm assuming that. Um, I mean, in the next couple of weeks and months, capital budget, I mean, I mean all the departments are going to have to dig pretty deep to, to look at that 10 year capital plan again. Hmm. I would guess. Yes. So in fact, uh, Don and Michelle and I met today. Um, and uh, there's two things with capital. Uh, one, um, there's things we should do. Uh, you know, there's some emergency equipment, you know, we, 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 we don't want our police cruisers to break down. We need to, and, and we have a year lag right now in buying those things. So if we don't if we don't get in the queue now, we could be two years behind on things like that. Same thing with the ambulance. We need to replace. You know, we're, we have a 12 year old ambulance that's ready to come off cycle, uh, and the six year we, we have two at a time, right? We have one and a backup that's used um, for emergencies and other purposes. So the 12 year old one's got got to be replaced, and and the six year old one becomes the backup. We get a new one. That could take a while to get to. We should skimp on that. Though those kinds of things we could, we can bond. Now we normally we've been paying cash for a lot of things. We might want to authorize bonding here and, and then see if the cash is good, we'll pay cash. If not, we can bond it for a couple of years. The rates are low uh, and uh, you know we, we, we stay tight. There's other pieces of heavy equipment that uh, highway really kind of needs. We don't need to have you know no heavy haul loader at the landfill uh, or um, you know a backhoe when they need to dig holes uh, to fix things. Uh, at the same time, um, you know I talked to Ron today. Ron's holding back on his projects. He said, look, some of the other things I want to do on IT, we can wait on. Um, same thing with the schools. We're going to do a deep dive and say, look, are there, if there are things that we can get done in the next six months uh, that are really important, we should get them done. But if there's things we can't get done in the next six months, a piece of equipment that we, should, that we don't need to tee up for right now, we just shouldn't. Uh, now, to, to be clear, there were $3.3 million of, of capital requests we were chewing on. We were clearly not funding $3.3 .3 million. Um, but even today, we were at a number that was you know, uh, pushing one7 well, that's come down even further. We're going to have to bring that number even further down. That said, um, I think we'll have, and Don can correct me, somewhere north of $2 million between what's in the fund and what we're planning to contribute to the fund just in the natural course of you know, debt being paid off and rolled back up. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the ability to do some capital, and we should. Um, that said, it's going to be smaller than we, we uh, initially projected, and uh, we're kind of, you know, there are things that if, that if we can hold to the, for six months, and see where things are, we'll do that. Um, so does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, and then just to clarify, so all the contracts are up, right? We need to go into negotiations with the town and the school side? Yeah, so so this is, the, we're going in, FY21 is the last year of a three-year cycle. So we will start negotiations in the fall or uh, you know early in the new uh, calendar year. Um, I don't think that's likely to happen at this point. Uh, I think everything's gonna be on hold, simply because we just don't know. Uh, and you know, I, I have some colleagues who have been in places where uh, towns were about to, you know, finish deals, but they haven't been signed off on and they're off the table because, you know, people had made deals for, you know, two or 3% increases and that's just gone. Uh, yeah. okay. Uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen next, but it's, you know, we clearly are going to have to look at this real hard. Uh, Rob, you have a question. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for your question. Rob? Uh, Don, just a the pension stabilization fund that you mentioned a couple minutes ago, um, where, where does that, what funds it? Uh, and was it just sitting around and nobody noticed or which would be great, so nothing but funds uh, I don't think that's it. Uh, nothing funds it at this point other than investment earnings year over year. Um, I believe 
it was established as Mass General Law Section 40-5. I'd have to get you the actual number in FY06, so about 15 years ago. But the fund has actually been around for many more years. And we have not appropriated any money in about 15 years from this fund. So this is the equivalent of finding one of your first communion savings bonds. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, that's actually a good comparison. We know about the way, money. Yeah, we knew it great... was there. We just weren't using it. That's all. Yeah, exactly. We, we, we've, we've long gone. It was there. It's a back pocket fund. We didn't need well, it. Didn't, we need it. I didn't mean to suggest for a moment that the accounting was bad. It's just that's good news. Okay, I just wanted to know whether that was money that was coming from someplace else. And as Chris says, um, it's raining now. So uh, I agree that it's time to pull out those kinds of stops. So. Right. Thanks for your Thank questions. you. Any other questions? Yeah. Lee? Yeah, it's Mike. I have a question. Uh, Lee first. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Lee, uh, Lee's, Lee's asking the question. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Chris, uh, are you aware that uh, a few of the towns around, we'll say like Carver, they've, they've uh, furloughed about 25 employees, Braintree's furloughing employees that aren't working. I think we may have a few employees that aren't working either. And I think it's really wrong that people are not working and being paid. Uh, and I, I agree with you. Uh, we shouldn't be paying people who aren't working. So I will assure you, Lee, that all of our employees are working, whether they're at home, whether they're here, whether they're splitting their time, uh, everyone is being paid is expected to work. Uh, library staff has done really excellent stuff. They've been working, they've been running programs. Um, they've been, uh, doing trainings. And that's just one example. Our elder affairs staff is coming in uh, daily. Uh, they're running the Meals on Wheels program. They're doing senior support uh, in this building. Um, you know, uh, we've been able to do a very, I mean, one of the nice things is that because we have a really robust IT setup, now, uh, Don and Paul are, are, are able to work, Don primarily from home at this point, uh, and, and we're still paying all our bills. So people are working full time. If we need something, Don. Any time of the day, Paul is available. We, we've been having meetings at all kinds of crazy hours. Um, so, and we've been doing these daily calls with operations staff every single morning at eight. We were doing seven days a week. We're down to six we're doing Sundays at this point. So uh, everybody is working. And now I, I will tell you that we're keeping our part-time van drivers, they're seniors, um, and we're not putting them in harm's way. We're not asking them to drive you know, people who are older or, or, or not well around anywhere. So I, we have a couple of van drivers that are probably not putting in as many hours as they used to, but uh, we feel kind of a, a, a you know, a, a, an obligation to these folks. You know, they work for 10 hours a week and I don't want to put somebody who's using that to help pay their rent uh, out. Um, that's it. So there's only a couple of people like that. Um, and, and, but otherwise everyone, and again, they're still working. They're still driving people. Um, maybe not, you know, the, the 10 hours a week, maybe they're only doing five. Um, but we're asking everyone who's getting paid is expected to work. And if we need them in a building, they're coming to a building. How about the school bus operators? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, they're actually uh, helping with some of the driving now. They're doing some of the, um, the Meals on Wheels deliveries. Um, and they're all part-time anyway, Lee, uh, the bus drivers. Now, again, I'm, I, I don't run the school side of the operation, right? So let me, uh, that said, the schools have been, you know, the teachers have been working. Um, the, the, the folks in the cafeteria have been preparing meals regularly, and they've been supplementing um, the senior food services uh, over the last uh, four or five weeks. So they've done, I got to tell you, they, they, anytime, anything we've needed, they've said, whatever you need. Um, and they're, they're, the senior, they're doing it uh, at the cafeteria. And the teachers have been working too. Uh, you know, they're doing classes every single day. But again, I, I, I have heard Pat's reports. Um, it, what I've heard is, is there's been some great stuff done. That said, um, they're, they're working, you know, they're, they're, they're probably working harder than all of us uh, trying to keep the education process working for parents at home. Um, so, but again, I, I, if you want an update from Pat, I'm sure he'd love to give it. Uh, Dick, you had a question and then Rob again. Dick? No, it's Mike. Mike, uh, Mike. Is my first name. I, yes, sorry. <laughs> I, I am just used to seeing your face. It's weird not seeing your face. Yeah, Mike? Yeah, sorry. All right, I have several questions on your uh, transfers. If we could put that um, chart back up. I can't hear you, Chris.
folks, can you hear me okay? Just yeah. nod. Can you, you see can. it, Mike? Is it back up? Yes. Can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So the yes, I do. We're all set now. Proposed adjustment number one: the transfer from pension reserve fund. What are we giving up? What What is the actual trade-off by taking that money out of the OPEP transfer funded from free cash? What are we giving up there? Those are those questions. I think I. I want to answer by saying we're not putting them into the OPEB fund that is struggling. Um, am no. I right on that? Are we... Nope. Okay. Could you clarify? Nope. We, are, we are fully funding. Well, not fully funding. In the last number of years, we've started to try to increase that OPEB transfer. We've gone from 100 to 150. PEB committee just recently went and got a funding policy approved through advisory and the selectmen. And the 165 is actually the full transfer we expected to transfer at annual town meeting, including the 3% increase over the last year that is expected from this funding so, policy. So it is just- So instead we're giving of, that up? Nope, so we're still gonna transfer that into OPEB, but instead of local receipts or state aid funding that transfer, we are using free cash to transfer that into a <clears throat> Well, if this is John. I'm sorry? My, my, I had a question on this where I could jump in. So we're effectively giving up liquidity in order to complete the OPEB transfer rather than the other option, which would be to defer it. Correct. Yes, that's it. Jim. Yes, yes. Uh, and okay. again, and then the, the trans we're doing this to keep faith with the policy, but the, 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 the final decision is obviously going to rest with all of you in the select. Oh, can we, can we get back to uh, the and full the transfer screen? Oh, wait, 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 Mike, um, can you please get back to the full screen, um, uh, Chris, because I can't see and there'll be too many people talking at once. Uh, Mike, is there any way you can put your video on? Because I don't know when you want to talk and then you're going to be over talking to somebody that I call on. Can you put your video on? Um, if I do, I'm going to, um, if I do, um, the Zoom will crash. Oh, okay. So I have. So we have to, well, I have to give other people turns to talk to, because I can't, I can't Well, tell. as long as I can ask all the questions that I have here that are all relevant, I don't mind giving up some, my questions now, as long as we can come back to them, that's fine. Oh, if time permits, we're going to, you know, we have to like, do the warrant tonight too, part of it. Um, anyway, John, did you have another question? Or no, Rob? that was my primary point, and I would like to put that option on the table and understand why, what the thinking is about it. About what? Which, um, the option of deferring OPEB instead of using our liquidity, which is money and free cash, which could right. be needed over the next couple of years. Okay. Uh, Rob, do you have a statement to make? A, a, quick, word, a, a quick word about transportation expenses. Chris, um, do I understand correctly that the town owns its buses and employs its drivers directly? Yes, it, yes it, it, well, we lease the buses. We uh, lease the buses, but we, we lease the buses. Them. But the drivers are employed by the town, correct? When the time comes and the school department's dealing with this, um, or we're talking to the school department about places to cut, uh, other school districts that enter into transportation contracts have been told by the state to keep paying them. Um, uh, so that the bus companies stay with us. Um, I've actually, I'm, I spent today writing a contract for nine districts and a school department that recognizes some discounts. I won't bore you with the details, but um, there are going to be instances where we're going to pay for things. Other towns are going to pay for things. We're going to pay for things that aren't going to happen right now. And that's as a good example. All contracted services for school departments the instructions from DESC and embedded in the federal aid statutes are keep paying on those contracts. So hopefully the school, I'm sure the school administration, the school committee understand that. But when we as an advisory committee are dealing with the school budget, um, that's a, a detail we should bear in mind that everything's not on the table. And a lot of that is not on the table because of federal, uh, federal regulation the federal statute and state agency guidance. So I, I have been- I knew I, one thing tonight, so I thought I'd pass it along. I've talked to Michael about this 
we've been in contact. He's reached out to all our contracted services to uh, to talk about proposed contract changes based on the actual services they're providing at this time. So they, they have been paying attention to that and um, we'll continue to monitor that over the, over the next many months and make sure we're paying for goods and services that are actually being provided. Yeah, there's a lot of issues there, none of which we need to hash out right now. Thank you. Um, Mike, do you have a couple questions you want to ask? Did you say? Yes. What, um, with the loss of um, the revenue, why have we not gone to the schools in the town for deeper cuts rather than sacrificing some of these other um, adjustments? That's one question. The other quest question is, and maybe we'll get to this when we start on the warrant, but what impact does the, um, the current situation have on the expenditures, the spending that we've already approved based on a pre-pandemic um, revenue estimate? Chris, can you answer that please? Yeah, I'll have Don tag me on this. Um, so th the first, the first question: um, Why not deeper cuts? Um, we don't know what the long-term impact it is here, Mike. So we don't. If we start laying, like I, I, as I said before, uh, most of our expenses are personnel, and most on, from the schools, particular, but in really every department. And uh, if we start, the, the, so if we had to start making draconian cuts, without, um, that's where we'd have to go first. And and in the short term, layoffs save us nothing. Um, because we have to eat employment expenses and we still have to pay medical. Um, so um, there's minimal cost savings and the disruption to the workforce is significant. Now that said, if it's something we have to do down the road because we have to do it, we should and we will. But at this point, it, it's a big giant step that I don't know that we're going to have to take. Um, and, and we don't want to, you know, we've developed a really great team. And, and again, you know, if we have to do, if we have to be, you know, if things get really bad, we have to lay people off, then you know, we have to shrink the workforce then we'll do that. That said, there's simply not enough information yet as to what the long-term impacts are going to be here. Um, I mean, I, 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 I wish that, that things would turn around and we'll have a, you know, a great summer and a fall. I don't know that. Um, at the same time, uh, I don't, uh, you know, we, we, um, we should do these things deliberately and with as much information as possible. So at this point, we, we, with some, we, you know, these are pretty minimal, uh, comparatively speaking, adjustments. And uh, and they're and they're cons they're conservative, and it is raining. Um, and and if, if the rain lets up, then we can you know continue to tack our sails and, and adjust. And if the rain gets heavier, um, then uh, we are going to have to make additional cuts. And you know we're coming into a contract cycle too, so that's going to present a lot better opportunity for us to to do things because we're going to have to. The other thing is we don't negotiate any any major changes. I mean we lay people off if we have to. We don't have to negotiate that, but. Um, you lay somebody hey, off and all of a sudden you have to move their work Chris, to I just want to say that I'm not advocating um, labor cuts. There are capital budget expenditures that can be addressed. Well, so we can, we can, we can not buy, we can not buy capital, uh, but that doesn't affect the operating budget though. It just, it just keeps our reserves higher. But if, if we don't buy equipment, it doesn't affect our operating budget particularly. Uh, you know, we still have to pay electricity and we still got to fix the windows and stuff like that. Did I kind of answer your question? I'm sorry if I went too long. Yeah. I, I think, Chris, if, if I could jump in there, the, yes. my point on the capital is, I think that, and you alluded to this earlier, that you can cut back the amount you could, as you, one of the other options you could put on if you were really looking at, reduce the amount transferred into the capital stabilization fund. I mean, I think the right place to have that discussion is when we come to that article. That's going to be one of the articles, ultimately, is the capital list. And in these circumstances, you want to do only the things that are really sort of imminently essential. And that's where I think we should have that debate. Okay, and, thank and, you. Uh, you know, that, that's the conversation we're having now. The question is, what can we, what are things that we should be doing now? Um, and what are things that we can hold? Because again, this, the plan at this point is to have a, a, a fairly robust special town meeting in December. Um, and you know, at that point, if we have to take additional actions, we will. If we can fund additional capital projects, we will. 
at the same time, uh, you know, we don't we don't want to be in a place where we just stop right now. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea either. Um, you know, there's certain pieces of equipment that we just don't, you know, I, I was just told an anecdote. I forget who the heck shared it with me. I think it was Glenn Pratt. Um, in 1941, town meeting voted for a fire engine. It got delivered in 1947. <laughs> World War II intervened, right? Uh, so it took six years to get the fire engine. Now, they, obviously, that was a little unique circumstance. But we don't want to be in a place here where if we need this ambulance, we don't get into the queue and we now have to wait a year or a year and a half. The emergency backup fails. Um, you know, we, we, we already went through a situation with the sewer plant where we stretched that out uh, longer than maybe practical. And we found ourselves uh, in a very tough situation. Now, the good news is that the sewer plant's been fixed and we're okay. Um, but my recommendation at this point is let's be really cautious about, you know, if, if, if we don't, you know, if, if we're gonna, um, if we're not gonna buy a piece of equipment, I'd rather, I'd rather do it because we have no choice and, and we have choices still today. And again, I remind, we have a $4 million stabilization fund. I'm not suggesting we tap $1 of it yet, but we still have a lot of money in reserve um, and we should. Um, and, and, if, and at this point, I don't wanna touch $1 of it, but let's not forget. Thank you, Chris. Can we go on to the warrant articles? Uh, Chris, do you want to lead us through some of the warrant articles? Okay. Um, so, does that? Did, I think. Does everyone have a copy of the updated warrant? Did everybody? No. No. I do not. That was not. I'm gonna just mute myself. Give me a second. I'm gonna pop that up too. So, uh, and I'll share this. Um, okay. Um, so. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, Helene. I'm going to put this up on the screen again. Um, no problem. Okay. Can everybody see the warrant? Yep. So the yes. original warrant was pushing 40 articles. So um, that's probably not practical. By the way, the new date is now June 16th. So the selectman set the date uh, on Tuesday night for June 16th. It's a Tuesday night, 7 o'clock at the Sullivan Gymnasium. That said, um, and what we're going through now is the process of finalizing the warrant and getting all the articles in place. Um, if the public health emergency prohibits the town from having that meeting that night, we won't have it. Uh, what happens once the warrant is set and locked is that the power falls to the moderator in, in a public health emergency in conjunction with the, um, the board of select, but in, in consultation generally, uh, can extend um, the meeting 30 more that? days. You're, uh, Chris, can you repeat that? If indeed sure. there's a health emergency, you, your uh, voice is breaking up. So if, um, if there is a still a public health emergency in place in, um, in, uh, in, June, in June and the meeting cannot be held safely, the moderator has the ability to, to move the meeting 30 days further uh, and also change its location. Uh, what we're going to be doing between now over the um, next and many weeks. And moderator so has to work. Chris, yeah, the town moderator has the authority to do that along with working with the chair of the board of selectmen and the chair of the advisory. Is that correct? Yeah, I, 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 Dan would consult with everybody. I believe the official ordinance is the, they, have to, they have to consult with the board of selectmen, but clearly there'll be a consultation with the whole group, I'm sure, at the town meeting. Um, so uh, that said, uh, we need to get a warrant together and certified so that not only can we have a town meeting, whether it's June 15th or the future, but the town election. So the town election is gonna stay on June 27th. That was moved already. Uh, the ballots are being printed, that's all set to go. And the town election will take will be able to take place by absentee ballot. So the, unfortunately, there's still gonna to have to be an absentee ballot request process. We're trying to find a way to, to move that entire down line. At, the, at this point, Secretary of State's office hasn't provided that option to us yet, but we're working to try to smooth that out. So people will be able to um, to vote by mail um, for the town election. So uh, people will not have to physically come in, even on June 27th, uh, if they uh, request a ballot in advance. But let me go through the, uh, so so one of the nice things is that uh, the advisory committee has already done a lot of work on this warrant. Uh, so we're down at the moment to, um, to 27 articles um, from the original 36 or 37. Um, and most of them are pretty, you know, done. Uh, 
town report and reports of committees are just routine. Um, but there are a couple of ones that are a little bit bigger, like the water rate amendments. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, um, the water commission is coming in front of the selectmen next Tuesday to talk about this. Um, that's, that's the schedule. Um, and, um, and I know they need to come back in front of this board as well. Um, and uh, so that's, that's going to be a conversation. Uh, a, is, 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 uh, is everyone still supportive of this? Uh, and if not, should this be held until December? Um, so that's, that's a conversation that I, I think you should consider scheduling for next Tuesday. Uh, I mean, the next, your next meeting next week, uh, providing we can get people to, to attend. Um, uh, the next article, uh, everyone had voted in favor of, and it's, this is just a housekeeping matter to allow us to pass through cable access money to the cable access station. The operating budget we've just been talking about, uh, the changes to that. Unpaid bills, um, there are no unpaid bills at this point, so we're gonna leave it on the warrant, but hopefully we'll just be able to pass right through that. Supplemental appropriations, um, the first one is, is, is still the same. Uh, we, it's the money we need to transfer to the cable access uh, that we haven't been able to because we don't have Article 4 passed yet. And there's gonna be another tweak uh, for the sewer department because uh, we've spent more money on diversion. Um, fortunately, that with that first half of the plant fixed, uh, we don't have to divert anymore at this point, so that's good news. Uh, but that'll have to be adjusted, and Don's looking at that now. In terms of stabilization, which you had already voted, um, and so had the selectmen, we're going to recommend uh, two changes to this. Um, we're going to recommend, again, that the stabilization, the amount going into capital re is reduced by that 55 that, that was it, it was going to propose. Up. We're recommending that we withhold the general stabilization transfer at this point. Um, and... Um, we're going to also recommend, as, you, as we said before, that the OPEP trust fund, if it gets funded, uh, is funded through free cash, not through general revenue. Um, capital improvement budget we're working on. Um, the department revolving funds are the same as they were before, so nothing's changed on that. Um, and Article 11 is, is uh, this, you know, uh, one is adding the funds, the other is, is, is setting the limits. So those have already been voted and approved. There's no changes. Article 12 is going to change. I'm going to have a proposal for you next week. Um, we're obviously, since the 250th has been postponed, um, there won't be $100,000 allocated to that. Um, but we're going, and, and uh, we're probably not, we're not going to recommend that we put money into uh, planning, uh, general planning studies at this point, um, what we're, or the tennis court study. Uh, what, we're, what we're instead coming to up with is, uh, and again, John can correct me if I'm misstating any of this based on our conversations. Uh, we're going to put some money aside. We're going to recommend money uh, put aside in this for uh, public health emergency related expenses in next year, because we shouldn't budget things. You know, we're not, hopefully we're not going to have to buy N95s and gowns and, and extra at extra rates forever. And we shouldn't really, we should really build that into the budget. Uh, these are, these are unique expenses. So we should set us an article for those kinds of expenses. And, um, we had money for maintenance and equipment upgrades. We're going to have to do some building retrofits. I mean, not major, major ones. There's got to be shields put in. There's going to have to be uh, other work done um, to keep, uh, you know, when when we do reopen um, so that uh, we minimize the possibility of any kind of viral transmission spread, because I'm afraid this is not going to go away. Uh, the possibility of spread is going to continue from all we've seen. So we're going to try to do some of that uh, in-house, as much of it in-house as possible. But uh, the big unknown is on the school side. We just don't know. I mean, uh, are all kids going to be required to wear masks? Are teachers going to have to wear masks? Uh, are they going to have to space the kids out in one classes? We have no idea. So we're going to need to have some money set aside uh, for um, some kind of tweaks and fixes at the schools as well. And again, we're still trying to figure out what that's going to be. Um, Article 13 is already done. That's just the annual chapter 91 piece. Article 14 was the real estate exemptions. We've already voted that. That hasn't changed. Article 15 hasn't changed. That's the real estate exemptions. Oh, I'm sorry, you haven't voted this one yet. So um, we're going to need, uh, I'm sorry, I slipped here. Um, we're going to need uh, you next week to consider this new, this additional veterans tax exemption um, and the prisoners of war tax exemption. I, I thought you would vote on this, but apparently you had. Um, I talked, I, Russ Benet and I have been playing telephone tag on CPC. Uh, what he's recommending, what we have, what's going to go in there. Um, the aggregation plan's already been voted um, by by uh, this board and the board of selectmen, so you know, I don't think there's anything to, that needs to be changed on that. Um, changing the name of the board of public health and changing the name of the board of selectmen. Again, I, I don't think there's anything uh, particularly uh, controversial about either one of those. Um, so, um, 
and, unless people want to hold unless the board select wants to hold those for some reason, I, those are going to stay on, I think. We might hold the rescission of unused borrowing. It's a good thing to do. We don't have to do it. It probably should take much time at all, but it's not something we have to do on this warrant. Um, and this last article 22 here, um, we, there's already a citizen petition on the warrant about, you know, moving the, you know, I think we've talked about this, the brook that runs under Smith place is not in the same place as the easement and we need to line them up. So the citizen petition would not do that properly. It just releases the easement. It doesn't get us a new one. This article that was drafted by town council will do both. It will both release the old easement and get us a new easement. Um, so um, this is, this is something that needs to be acted on by town meeting. Um, and the next one, by the way, is also critical. Uh, it's adoption of new floodplain and water protection district maps. And uh, right now, FEMA has a deadline of June 19th. If we don't adopt it by then, we're out of the flood insurance program. Uh, there's an incredible amount of lobbying underway, but FEMA at this point does not recognize that town meeting can't be held on the computer like this. So um, we're hoping to get this adopted. Um, this is just routine. This, everything's already been vetted. Um, there's there's uh, four other articles that are going to be considered by the select the next week. One is uh, funding for a schematic design for town hall. The question is, is this something that we fund now uh, and continue the work and see if we can fund the full project later? Or is it something that we wait and pick up the funding for in December? So that's a question that's like when I got to pick up on Tuesday. Um, easements for 124 Elm Street. Um, this is the Class and Arbor Inn project. Um, the planning board is going to sponsor this article and they know that they have to have this together. Um, and I think it's going to come for the, for the select one on May 12th. Um, that's the plan. Uh, and if the board of uh, planning board doesn't have this together, then we'll have to wait till December. Um, and there's one, there's one other, I kind of skip over it. Um, it it's, uh, it's the transfer of, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Uh, it's transferring 808 Jerusalem Road to the Affordable Housing Trust. That's the old, um, was the old antique store at, at West Corner that burned. The town owns that land. It's actually, Paul is the, the uh, trustee at this point of that property for the town. Um, this has um, been considered a prime spot for a potential small affordable housing uh, project. And um, um, the Affordable Housing Trust would have liked like to acquire it for that purpose. So this article would uh, formally transfer the property into the Affordable Housing Trust. So uh, that's the warrant. So there's really only about five or six articles um, that really need additional work. So I think over the next couple of weeks, we, you should be able to get those get those through. Um, any questions for me at this point on these? Just make sure that we get it, okay? Thanks, Chris. Absolutely. Can you transfer us back to the whole street? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I can't see it when I do this. I can't see what it looks like anymore. I just want to review with people that um, our meeting next week is going to be Thursday, May 7th at 7.30 p.m. The week following is May 13th. We're going to meet on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Okay, the 7th and the 13th. Fran, question. I can't hear you. The earlier draft that we had of the of the uh, of the warrant, we had a number of we articles P one through P, the zoning issues. Are they going to still come up? Yeah. So the planning board, I thank you for bringing that up, uh, and uh, the planning board's voted to hold those to the fall, uh, okay. to, to a special town meeting because uh, you know while they're not all that were none of them are particularly controversial except for one. Um, I, I, it would probably take an hour to grind through them, and and, and, I, and nobody really thinks that's it's the right time to do that right now. Okay, so. thank you. Yep. So, Chris, is there anything else you want us to do tonight, Chris? I can't hear you, Chris. I can't hear you. My space, my space bar wouldn't release. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I think, um, you know, I think, I think we've covered a lot. Um, I mean, if anybody has any other questions on. Um, so uh, can you write up, uh, Chris, can you write up uh, an agenda in, you know, for next week um, and send it to everybody? You can first, you know, uh, send it to me and then uh, you and I will talk about it. Yeah, I'll have some, I'll, I'll wrap something up with Tracy and we'll send it out. Uh, for but um, so far, we're going to be dealing with Article 3, Article 15, and uh, the another the other articles have a different number than the original warrant. Yeah, so yeah, I'll have an, a, an updated warrant sent out to all of you. Uh, 
with a, with a schedule of, of article review. Yes, and oh, the water will present next week. Well, I'm gonna I'll reach out to them and, and see if that we can get them in next week. For you folks. Okay, Mary, you have a question. Yeah, um, Chris. So I'm assuming that capital budget has been meeting and they're going to review their items. Is it possible for us to listen into those meetings? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, this actually makes it really easy, right? Um, I, I think I think it would be a challenge if we put all three boards in one giant meeting to try to get questions answered. It would, it's hard enough when everyone's in person. That said, I think it would be great to have people at least listen in. So once that meeting is set, I'll make sure that it's shared with everybody. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, I think they're, I think we're trying to get them, I think they're trying to meet sometime next week, but I don't have a date yet. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so we're gonna take up the articles next week. I have a question. Oh, okay. Yes, I can't tell, Mike, because, yes, go on. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, ask it. Um, I'd like to um, just remind uh, Chris that we need to have the larger um, budgets like school committee well in advance. So I don't know what you've got planned for the 7th or the 13th. And I also have the 21st noted here on the bottom of our agenda. But um, I think it would be wise to have those budgets to us well in advance, not the day before, but several days before. So um, thank you for bringing that up. So um, the, the, you, you've now, the, the advisory had gone through the entire town side of the budget. So uh, the, the changes that Don wa walked us through include, a, you know, the, the 42,000 that's kind of come out or is not going to impact direct services. Um, and we can share all where that is. Uh, the schools are now taking a hard look. And you haven't even seen the school officially, right? I mean, you've gotten the draft budget, but they haven't presented. Um, the school committee, I believe, is meeting, um, I, I, I don't know that they were meeting, I don't think they met last time. I think they're meeting next next Wednesday. And they have to, uh, uh, and, and by the way, all this information that we share with you, they've, they've had this, uh, we've been talking with them. So uh, they're in the process of figuring how to make this work. Um, they understand they have to make it work. Uh, and uh, we're going to get back. Um, they're, I, be they're, I believe, going to adopt this budget um, on the 13th, uh, which is the same night that you folks are meeting um, because uh, you couldn't do the meeting on the 14th. So um, I will follow up with Ellen Mark and see where they are on this. And um, you know, it's kinda, it, it, it may be a little tight. Um, I mean, we, we have a tiny little bit of flexibility the week of the 19th. Um, so if, if, for example, um, you know, this had to go to the 21st uh, for you folks to have a final meeting on the budget. Um, um, that could happen. And, and again, in a worst case scenario, um, the, the, the votes to recommend or not recommend can go into the motion packet. And that's not preferred. We're, we're in a kind of a, a time crunch. Um, so um, so we, we will uh, send the updated materials to you, Mike. Uh, and, and once the schools, uh, I, again, I, I, if you do not, I will follow up, and again, I'll ask Don to follow up with Michael. So if there's any other materials, which I think were distributed to all of you, we can get those back out. I know they have a big budget packet. The schools have done a big budget packet. So if we can get Michael to share those again, uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll try to schedule a time for them to, to meet jointly with all of you as soon as possible. Thank they you. Do, they do have the next meeting next Wednesday that they were planning to go through their budget with these adjustments. Okay, so May 6th, that's good. So if they adopt their budget on May 6th, it would be perfect if you either do it on the, on the uh, next, next week or the 13th, probably the 13th. No, uh, yeah, uh, one other question on the warrant re sure. regarding the schools. Uh, back in January, um, you presented a $79,000 um, allocation to the schools within the town side of the budget uh, to keep peace in some fashion. I'd like to know if that expenditure can be t removed, or if it's, no, that was, it's actually seventy-five thousand. Yeah, it's actually seventy-five thousand dollars, and it was in the one-time cost uh, uh, article. It was it was using free cash to help fund uh, their curriculum, their math curriculum. Uh, they still need that math curriculum. I mean, that's that has not gone. Uh, and so, um, at this point, I think they've. I know they've formally asked us to keep that in there. That seventy-five thousand um, uh, dollars to help them, you know, uh, you know, keep their budget as as balanced as possible. So they've made that request to keep it in. So, uh, Mary, 
Um, I do know back when we had all this conversation, um, Lee had also asked for a little more information about that. So right. it's possible to communicate that with them. And I'm happy to, um, I had a call with Michael and Patrick yesterday. I'm happy to talk to them just so they're not, just so we have everything that we need and we don't have to drag it out. That would be great. Yeah, I think that was actually, I, I remember the conversations and I think, this whole, I think the whole COVID hit us about the time they were supposed to be transferring that information over. So I'm sure they have it. Um, so yeah, that'd be, if you can, you know, if you're going to talk to the Mary, uh, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I'm happy uh, to. Uh, and they were going to share information on the math curriculum. I believe that was the big thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lee wanted a little more detailed information. Right. About that, and it sounds like Michael, it would be good for us all to have that. Right. That'd be great. Um, thank you for the assistance. Any other questions of me? Oh, we know or Don? And Mike, by the way, if you have any questions offline, feel free to call uh, Don or myself. Happy to, you know, if anyone has any other budget questions, feel free to call either, either one of us. Um, off Great, line. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, thank you, Helene, very much, and thank you, all of you. Okay, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? We'll make the motion, Lee Jacobs. Little Lee makes the motion and second. Anybody second the motion? Second. Uh, Fran seconds the motion. All in favor of adjourning, say, uh, say aye. 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 That's everybody. Okay. Well, thank you all for participating. And I'll see you guys Good night. next night. Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Okay. Take care. Thank you. And we'll get, I'll get you an agenda you and, uh, as soon as possible. Okay. And, and then send it to the uh, town clerk. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll work with Tracy to get that posted. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You uh, can I ask Don and to and Paula to hang out for just a second as everybody else leaves. Okay, take gotcha. care. I'm leaving. Right. Good night. Lynn.